Cleveland coach Luke Walton spoke after the game. It was a lot of fun. You know, you heard the crowd, you know, the whole game. Um, just the whole, you know, demeanor in the gym is just crazy. Um, it's my first time playing here. And, um, you know, it would have been nice if we got a win, but um, it was very eventful and it was a good game. It was obviously, it was great to see happen tonight. We needed it when he did it because they were starting to roll on their end too. Um, but he, he, he's a competitor and, uh, you know, he really, he gave us, he gave us everything he had tonight. Chris, set the table for us a little bit of what, what the atmosphere was like last night and then talk about what, how impressed you were by it. Well, it was, a, it was a good atmosphere. Um, you know, whenever the Lakers are in town, it's always interesting. And I think there were a lot of fans there strictly to see Lonzo Ball play. I saw a lot of Lonzo UCLA jerseys in the crowd, a lot of Lonzo Laker jerseys. So there was an anticipation for Lonzo. And I thought he played well. I mean, the Lonzo haters have always kind of perplexed me. With, with all due respect to the NFL quarterback. I think playing point guard in the NBA is the most difficult position for a college player to step into because you've got to be a leader of men right away. You've got to learn terminology that's different. And in today's NBA, you have to go up against the best player on every single team, it seems like, every night because the point guards are, are the marquee position uh, in the NBA. And Lonzo has been very good. I mean, people are jumping up and down on him. I, I remind people all the time of what Russell Westbrook was like his first year, averaging like 15 points a game and shooting 27% from three. Jason Kidd, a couple of years, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, a guy that Lonzo is favorably compared to a lot. He averaged 11 points per game, shot 27% from three. So Lonzo start to a season when he's averaging nine, seven, and seven, that's pretty good. So I, I, I like what I saw Lonzo, and I'm a big fan of what he's going to be down the line. But it, I, I totally agree with the second part. Like, I am a still a buyer on Lonzo's future stock. When he came into the league, I thought, he, I thought he'd be better quicker. I thought he'd be rookie of the year this year. Now, I didn't account for the Ben Simmons factor, but even if Ben Simmons wasn't a factor, Lonzo right now wouldn't be rookie of the year. I thought that he wouldn't have as much of an issue with the shot because it's not like his shot always looked funny, but it was pretty effective at UCLA. He was an above average shooter. So I didn't- There's a lot of guys with perfect shots in college that don't transition to the NBA. A absolutely. And and so I I didn't anticipate this level of offensive struggle. And so I'm still a buyer in his basketball IQ, in the way he plays the game. I believe passing is infectious. I believe that if you have a guy that is the type of player that wants to get other people involved, players that are typically on an island selfish, they then start wanting to get more people involved mm -hmm. as well. So I like all of that about Lonzo. But I, I also think it's fair to say this year, he just hasn't been very good. Like, he rebounds very well for his position, and he's a good passer. But his shooting percentage has been so bad that it drags everything down. And in late game situations, particularly for the Lakers, they are easier to defend because it's a five-on-four situation when Kuzma's trying to go to the rim, when Ingram's trying to go to the rim, because you don't have to worry about Lonzo's shot. Chris, I think you made a great point about the transition. And I just think normal sports fans who don't follow, who don't follow pro sports every single day and understand the transition, it's no different than kids graduating college and going into their professional career. For them to be equipped, they, they're years away from being equipped to be able to do whatever type of degree they have, even a master's program. Now, in the NBA, like the NFL, quarterback point guard. Also, the physical change in what they're doing. When you are a third-year senior, fourth-year senior in college, you've been redshirted, you are a grown man. You're leading kids. The NBA with the one and done, you're the kid leading all these grown men. So the ability to be able to change not only the dynamic in that locker room, I mean, he's played, he's played phenomenal if we were guarding him, I mean, if we were measuring him against NBA history. After 26 games, this is his third game last night where he had 17, 8, and 6. There's only three other players the last 30 years that have done that. LeBron and um, Westbrook. Uh, 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 Westbrook. Okay. All right. All right. At this point, through 26 games. All right? He's done this three times. LeBron did it in his debut um, at Madison Square Garden. He only shot 35%. Playing in the garden is not easy. To me, I still believe he will be a star. But we as fans and analysts, there is no process for, uh, for, for people to come from college. Like, we're wrong all the time. 
and very few people want to admit that they're wrong. It is a process to develop. Alonzo, he's in the process. He's still going to be a very good player, but we're just not fair in letting guys transition because we thought they would be better. Look at all the rookies. All right, there's only a couple guys having a better season than him. So why aren't we talking about them? And the reason is because of the dad and everything else is the reason why we're not going to give him the value that he's created. And uh, it's tough doing what he's doing. Is the dad going to be that final thing that keeps him from, from really ever succeeding in his own, his own right, in his own billing? No, I say never. I, I cut that one off. No, the dad won't have... On his arc in the basketball community, his dad won't be able to squash that. If he's good with the Lakers, the, dad, the Lakers are so big that the dad will get drowned out in him well, continuing to develop. Well, first of all, I'm never wrong in my predictions. I just point that out. I'm always right. <laughs> um, a cu couple things. One, I, I think the dad could be a problem. The Lakers are already talking to the dad about toning down the rhetoric against Luke Walton. I had an executive text me during the game last night who reminded me of what happened with Eric Lindros and the Flyers back uh, 10, 15 years ago. I was covering that. I was Eric, covering that. You remember that? Eric, the parents were always a, there. A par the parents who back in the day were creating charts to see who in the Flyers was passing to Lindros and who wasn't. Now, that may be next level. LeVar may not be that kind of sinister, but that relationship between Eric Lindros' parents and the Flyers detonated the, the career for Eric Lindros and the Flyers. Could we see something comparable? Maybe if LeVar doesn't tone it down, if he's still out there, and the next time that Lonzo doesn't play... So you're fourth, concerned that Magic Johnson is not going to handle that situation? I'm concerned. They've already talked to him. But that's the thing, Chris. It's, it's December in his first year, and they already have to talk to him mm -hmm. about what he's doing there. So yes, I am concerned. Let me push back, too, on one thing that you said about Lonzo shooting there. Like, it, shooting is the number one problem for every rookie coming to the NBA. Kawhi Leonard was a terrible shooter early in his career. Everybody comes into the NBA, outside of Jason Tatum right now, right. as a terrible shooter. What scouts were telling me last night and, and before is that Lonzo's the kind of guy that you need to put his type of players around him. You need guys that play above the rim. Lonzo's so capable of throwing alley -oops. Absolutely. You need shooters. I couldn't. I counted it probably half a dozen times in that game last night, Nick, where Lonzo could have gotten assists if his guys made open jump shots. Right now, they don't have high flyers, and they don't have consistent shooters on the outside. You surround Lonzo Ball with those type of players, he is going to be a walking triple-double threat every single night. Uh, I actually agree with you on that. But if you're going to struggle like he, you're saying all rookies struggle shooting, and you're, you're right in large part. He is struggling even on a rookie standard from in, in the paint, outside of the paint. Free throw line is more troubling. Free throw line is, is shocking mm -hmm. that he's shooting below 50% from the free throw line if you're shooting 70% at UCLA. But then here's one, here's one thing you can control, how often you're shooting. How often you're driving to the basket. He drew one foul, one shooting foul yesterday. It was at the end of the game on a three-pointer. And how often you're shooting threes? He's shooting five threes a game. So if you're not, Lonzo is a good athlete. He's taller than most of the guys guarding him. I would like to see him at least attempt to get more baskets near the rim. Again, I want to. I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. I think I am buying Lonzo's stock for the future. But I think because we talk about it every day, CC. It's, it's a volatile stock right now. And some days it's here and some days it's you here. You allow it to be volatile. If you're buying by GE, you're in it long term. No, seriously. Like, <coughs> this is what these young guys are. He's the number two pick in the draft. Like, you just don't throw away kids. That's why I thought the, the G League, I didn't think that was going to be the answer. He is on the right track to be the star that the Lakers want. And it was evident last night in the Garden. Chris, thank you so much. My it's pleasure. always great having you, guys, you here. I, you guys are going to get excited about the Cavs still later, like after that big Hawks win last night. Oh, yeah. yeah listen, uh, listen, listen, I get pump it. Pump it up. I, I get it. So, the, the 114 Cavs, points to get up to the Hawks. The, the yeah. Cavs are the only team in the league that play the Hawks, evidently. Uh, Drop a little and, grenade. Hey, hey, let me tell you.